Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're gonna settle down and do a nice cozy tag. I wanna do, this is called the Makeup Newbie Advice Tag, and I believe this was created by Makeup Queenie 68 I will have her video and her channel linked down below. So there are 14 questions, technically 15. The 15 is a tag, someone else, but these uh, questions are really geared towards helping someone who's like brand new to makeup. Uh, basically like find their footing and I thought that was really cool I've had this on my list of tags I've wanted to do for a while and I'm just now getting to them I feel like it's been a while since we did a tag so I've got some products pulled I've got the questions up let's jump right in question number one is what do you suggest a new makeup rare where where blah wearer oh my god why was that so difficult should buy first Ooh, oh it's been a long day if you couldn't tell Honestly, I would say whatever you're the most interested in, buy that first. Does eyeshadow, like, really, really intrigue you? Get an eyeshadow palette. Do you want to wear foundation and get used to that? Pick that up. Do you like lipsticks? Do you want to try a different lipstick color? Pick up one of those. But make sure it's something that you're actually interested in and you want to start using. Don't just pick it up because someone else said, hey, you need this, you need that, blah, blah, blah. And don't pick it up just because... Uh, like if you're brand new to YouTube, don't pick it up just because someone used it in a tutorial because it might not work for you and your skin tone and your skin type. So it is kind of a, um, a journey trying to figure out what would work best for you. So personally, I would recommend pick up something that might not be as finicky. Like eyeshadows can work for most people. Lipsticks can work for most people. Pick something up kind of like that because when it gets to like foundations, concealers, that's a bit more difficult. <laughs> and if you go back to my video, my early videos, girl could not match a foundation <laughs> for nearly a year. Oh my god, I, I looked like, whew, I looked terrible. And that was back when I was tan. Now that I'm Casper, I'm still having issues. <laughs> but yeah, so that's start with the easy stuff. <laughs> Question number two is, what is your favorite way to find deals on makeup? I honestly love, I haven't been there in a while, but I love going to TJ Maxx and Marshalls. If you're looking for discounted, discontinued, higher end makeup, you can find it there. But if you're looking for like the drugstore kind of more affordable makeup, I love going to CVS. They've got good coupons. You can always keep using your card and rack up some points and get cash back. So. CVS is kind of my go-to for drugstores and Target too. Target has a good makeup section if you have like a nice Target near you. You can tell the difference between like a nice Target and a Target that's not as restocked as often. But um, Target, CVS, TJ Maxx and Marshalls. And if you've got something in particular that you want from a brand, uh, it's actually probably better if you sign up for their email list and then keep an eye just on what they send you because I signed up for quite a few different brands and I just get random coupons like big coupons 30 40 50 percent off just through the email so if you've got something in mind like I don't know you want something from Wet n Wild specifically or Milani specifically sign up for their emails and see what they send you question number three is what is your favorite makeup to collect for me it's eyeshadow palettes <laughs> I just recently did uh, my declutter week here on the channel and I did my eyeshadow palette collection which it's more of a collection than a declutter. I had about 120 palettes and I decluttered about 25 of them. Um, I just rearranged them all on my cute little bookshelf. I'll throw a picture up right there and I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> that's that's my favorite part are the eyeshadow palettes. Question number four is what is your top advice for building a makeup collection? So back back in the day when I barely had enough makeup for a full face I I would say don't just buy stuff for the sake of buying stuff. Buy stuff that you're really interested in. Take the time to do research on the products. Watch more than one video of someone talking about the product. Watch people of different skin types use the product. And if it's something you can't really find a lot of videos on, though I feel like in this day and age is probably a video for everything, which is an awesome part of YouTube, just Make sure it's something that you actually want and you know you're going to be reaching for. And don't think you have to get everything at once. I have a big palette, or no, I have a big palette collection, but I also have a big makeup collection now. It took me years to get everything. Years. And you have to also keep in mind how long products last when you get them. An eyeshadow palette's gonna last longer than a lipstick. Makeup can go bad. So you also have to keep that in mind. You don't want to just buy everything, keep it like a hoard it like a dragon, not use any of it. But it doesn't mean you can't have and still enjoy a bigger collection. 
You just need to find out what works best for you. And try not to compare yourself to all the other YouTubers that have like beauty rooms. Because <laughs> that's not realistic. It's not. I call my room a beauty room, but I, I live here. <laughs> that's my bed. The, I, this is my room. So this is my only room and by default it is the beauty room. <laughs> Question number five is, what is your number one recommended easy eyeshadow palette a newbie should try or buy? I actually have two recommendations here and they're both more affordable options. My first one are the original 10 pan palettes from Wet n Wild. These are such good quality and you've got a good amount of shades, you've got a good amount of product. I like the actual size of the pans in here and they're just so good. So this one is called my glamour squad it's a really nice glam it's just dupe the um abh soft glam palette so it's basically just like a nice soft glam palette <laughs> this one's got a little bit more color if you want color and this is called stop playing safe and this is supposed to be a dupe for a natasha denona palette i believe it was the tropic palette beautiful colors awesome quality. And last but not least, this one I believe was a limited edition palette from their Halloween collection. I just want to say not all of their limited edition stuff is good. <laughs> actually, quite honestly, most of their limited edition stuff is trash, but this one was actually a diamond in the rough. And it's just kind of kind of similar to the My Glamour Squad, but it's got a lot more um, warm yellow red tones. So those are all the 10 pan palettes from Wet n Wild that I would really recommend. These are $4.99 each, and if you can find them in store, you don't have to pay for shipping or anything, but if you buy them on their website, I think if you go above $30, it's free shipping, but I would recommend try checking out your local Target, your local CVS, see if you can find one of these because they're awesome. The other palette I would recommend, unfortunately they did close all of their physical stores. They used to have physical stores in malls, which is where I used to go a lot because my local mall had a store, and that's Elf. You could find these at Target too now, um, and even though they have recently come out with these bigger palettes, I really really like their 10 pan palettes in this packaging. So this is the Mad for Matte 2 palette, and as the name would state, it's a matte palette, but it's, it's such good quality, and you've got basic staple shades like a lighter shade you can use to set your um eye primer or use as a transition you've got a matte black that you can really do so much with every i honestly think you need a matte black in a, like a starter palette because it'll help so much and it gets helps you get used to using a black too because i think like when i first started the most intimidating shadow for me was black <laughs> it took me a long time to get to it but i think uh, when you approach it in a palette like this it's much more approachable and then the other palette from e.l.f. that I'd recommend, I, I think this is still available, this is the Rose Gold Sunset palette. And this one, it's kind of the same tones as the Mad for Mac 2, but this one you've got some shimmers, and you've got a little bit more variety here. They're both very fall-themed palettes, because I love fall, but um, I honestly think you couldn't go wrong with either of these. Question number six is, what is your absolute necessity? Words. Question number six is, what is your absolute necessity item or an item you would never not use in a look? So this is going to sound a bit weird, but it is astounding how much better your makeup will look. Even like if you're just doing a regular basic everyday look, not on camera or anything. It's amazing how much better it looks once you use setting spray. I, I think everyone should have a setting spray. Uh, if you're setting your foundation, if you're not setting your foundation, if you've got powder, if you're not using powder, if you have dry skin, if you have, everyone needs a setting spray. <laughs> it's just like, it's astonishing the difference. Uh, I kind of wish I hadn't sprayed and done my face already so I could show you a side by side. But with the amount of makeup that it's kind of, I guess, in vogue to put on now, you're gonna look pretty powdery. <laughs> And I, I like to put on like my foundation, my concealer, my powders, blush, bronzer, contour, highlight, and then before I go in to do everything else, I spray my full face down with setting spray. And it just melts everything together. It helps prolong the wear of your makeup, it makes it a little bit more comfortable, and it just makes it look and feel more like skin. And so, 100%, I think you need, you need a setting spray. I've got different options here. If you want to go the more pricey route, you've got the Smashbox Primer Water, which is way too expensive, but I like it. <laughs> and it actually is a good primer, especially if you've got combination dry skin. You can also use this on top of makeup. Uh, the next 
more expensive option that you could pick is from MAC and it's the Fix Plus. It's a tried and true one. You can use this also to spray um, shadows, sh uh, shimmer shadows before you put them on your lid or you use them in an eye look. Uh, this is really good and I like their new scents. I really like the rose one. I've been using that one a lot. But I want to emphasize, you do not need to spend a lot of money. <laughs> I just have those options there if you're interested. But some of the best setting sprays I've used are from the drugstore. This one is from Catrice. This is the Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Setting Spray. Like the name says, this is going to make you look very dewy. So you, this one only works if you're going for a more kind of glowy look. If you're looking for a more matte look, uh, there's this setting spray from Shop Missé. It's just the A Plus setting spray. It's a bit more matte. It is heavily scented. So if you don't like scent or you're sensitive to scent, this probably isn't going to be for you. But I really like this one and this is a dollar. I can't believe I almost forgot this one. Last but certainly not least, I think the setting spray I've probably rebought the most other than the MAC Fix Plus is from Milani. That's the Make It Last setting spray. This is really good. Get the original. Don't get the matte. The matte one is actually trash. <laughs> I, d I really don't like it. Not even in the summer. But the original Make It Last setting spray, it's like a perfect dupe for Fix Plus, honestly. All right, now that I've waxed poetic about setting sprays for five minutes... <laughs> Question number seven is lipstick or lip gloss product recommendations. So I like liquid lipsticks. If I was going to put on a gloss, I really only wear a gloss either over a liquid lipstick or for the camera. I've never just thrown a gloss on and left the house since I was like 13. <laughs> and even then, probably not much. Uh, so I definitely go for liquid lipsticks and uh, as a newbie, I would still recommend going cheaper. There are a lot of expensive nice lipstick options, but there are some amazing options from the drugstore and my favorites are from Wet n Wild. And so this is kind of my essential starter lip wardrobe, if you will. You can change out this one because this is their lighter nude lipstick option. It's called Nudie Patootie. They have a bunch of shades. So they've got deeper brown shades. They've got deeper kind of mauve berry shades. So I believe most people can find a nude or a close nude in this line. But the Nudie Patootie one is the best nude option for someone of my pasty ass complexion. And then the next two, you got a nice classic red. This is called Missy uh, and Fierce. Just the perfect like holiday red glamorous red and it wears great and is super comfortable and then my favorite i literally like talk non-stop about this lipstick on my channel this is rebel rose and it's just like the perfect mauve like oh, love this lipstick it wears fantastic it's comfortable it looks gorgeous and this looks gorgeous on like every skin tone i've seen it on it's amazing <laughs> i love this so if you get nothing else from this video get rebel rose from wet and wild Question number eight is brushes slash sponges, what brand? Uh, if you've seen any of my videos, you'll know that I love the black teardrop sponge from Shop Miss A. It's a dollar and it's the best. Don't spend $20 on a beauty blender. I please, dear God, don't. Don't waste, don't throw away your money like that because you don't have to. The Real Technique sponges are also okay. I just think they're a bit too big for my face and a bit too squishy for me. The black teardrop sponges are like perfect and I love them. <laughs> For brushes, I go a little bit all over the place. I've got a lot of Sigma. I've got a lot of kind of random brands. I actually did a full video testing affordable makeup kits. So if you're interested, I'll throw that up in the cards because I go really in depth on kits that are supposed to be or advertised as like a full face and they're affordable. Like so I compared Wet n Wild and BH Cosmetics and e.l.f. So check out that video because I go a bit more in depth there. And I really do think um, a brush kit like that, something affordable, is a great place to start. Question number nine is, what is your favorite high-end item they should splurge on? I love me some eyeshadow palettes. I love eyeshadow palettes so much, but I don't really want to recommend a high-end eyeshadow palette. Something I've found recently that I also love are high-end highlighters. And I've been getting a lot of use out of my higher-end ones. I love some ones from Becca. I love... Um, there was a Kevin Aquan one that's really nice, but the one that I love and I thought I spent too much money on, but I actually, I really love this stupid highlighter, is <laughs> from Dior, and this is the Dior Skin Nude Luminizer in 01, and it's just such a beautiful shade. I hit pan in it, I did have this in a project pan project, but I love this. And I really do think highlighters for how long they last and how much of a great effect they can have on your face and how they can transform a look, I do think that would probably be a nice starter, like luxury item or higher end item. So Dior has some awesome ones. 
Becca has some awesome ones. And as much as I don't want to promote ABH right now because of the shit they've been pulling, uh, the ABH glow kits. I have almost all of them and they're good. Question number 10 is, what is your favorite drugstore item that you won't regret buying? And for me, I think that's primer. I never regret using primer. I know some people say that it doesn't make a difference for them and they don't really like it. I definitely see a difference with primer and I love it and I love finding a good affordable everyday primer. And for me, that is the original e.l.f. putty primer. I panned an entire one. I hit the bottom of this one. This is my second one. And I got one in the wings waiting. <laughs> Such a good primer. I think this is like $8.99 or $8 and oh, it's so good. I compared this side by side of the Tatcha primer that this is supposed to be duping and this one won. Yeah, I love this thing and I honestly really think that you should pick it up. Like I don't care what kind of skin like type that you have. I think this is really really just good <laughs> and it does help blur pores and it, it smooths out my skin Makeup goes right on, goes great right on top of it, and it makes my makeup last all day. Question number eleven is: What is your favorite brand to recommend for newbies? Honestly, any drugstore brand. I really think the ones that are stepping it up and doing some great things are Wet n Wild. Just steer clear of their limited edition collections because they're shit. Elf has some pretty good products, but again, they're kind of hit or miss. I did a 4x4 for e.l.f. a while ago, so I'll link that playlist down below where I kind of compare the top four and bottom four products from brands. Check out the drugstore versions of those so that you know kind of what products to avoid. So, uh, Wet n Wild, e.l.f., and Milani. Milani has been doing excellent <laughs> recently. They have some awesome eyeshadow palettes. They have great, um, base products, even though like the foundation and concealer hasn't worked for me, I've seen it work for a lot of other people and it's been like their holy grails. So I think it's it's a really good place to like start experimenting and seeing like what just work well and just seeing what works best for you. I need, I need to go to bed. Question number 12 is what is your most enjoyable or fun makeup to use? Eyeshadow. I love doing different eyeshadow looks. I love playing with color. I love being neutral. I like being glam. I like how much it can change my look. Like I can look like a totally different person just with like eyeshadow. And I think that's so cool. <laughs> Question number 13 is what is your favorite behind the scenes item? Honestly, I would go back to the setting sprays. Really, people don't talk about them too much. They, they don't really make a big deal out of them. I think the only one I consistently see people talking about are the Urban Decay All Nighter, which I tried that one, way overpriced, don't get it, <laughs> and the Fix Plus. And I like Fix Plus, I buy it when it's on sale because it's a bit pricey at $24 a bottle, but honestly think it's a really underrated product and step in your routine. You're gonna see a huge difference in your entire makeup application once you start using setting spray. And I wish I had used it sooner because my first few months of trying foundations before my channel, that it was a bit tragic. Question number 14, if you could tell a person just starting out with makeup anything, what would it be? I would say don't compare yourself too much to everyone else. It is really easy to watch these videos, see these gorgeous people with these awesome tutorials and feel bad about your own skill level. It's all about practice and we literally all have to start somewhere. My first eye looks looked like shit. I had to Google how to put on lipstick because I didn't know what I was doing wrong. It always looked bad when I put it on. Yeah, and everyone starts somewhere. So if you like makeup, if it's something that you are interested in and you want to get better at, you have to put the time in, sit down at night, play with some makeup, practice some different things, look up old school tutorials and actually do it along with them because that's some of my favorite things to do. Like in the morning when I get ready for work, I love just putting on YouTube and listening to videos and watching people do their makeup while I do my makeup and it's, it's my happy me time. So I would say never let it stress you out. Don't make, don't think that you have to compare yourself to everyone else because at the end of the day, makeup should be your happy you time and you shouldn't be doing it for anybody else. And if anyone says that your makeup looks like shit, tell them the fuck off. All right, so that's it. I don't want to tag anyone in particular because I was so late getting to this tag. I'm sure almost everyone's already done it. So if you're watching this, you have a YouTube channel and you haven't done this tag yet, I tag you. <laughs> and let me know down below if you do the tag because I would want to watch the videos.
So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope if you enjoyed this video, you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you guys for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.